it working in the big Donna Wakely Media Journal again. Um, so we've got two pages in here that are started. I don't consider either one of them really finished, but I feel stuck. So, in, and I've been playing with some papers. Maybe I could put some papers out here, or maybe I could, you know, do some collage on top of there. Maybe this yummy piece of, I don't know what this is, like some kind of ribbon, but it's, it's like the jute stuff. Um, but I thought maybe, you know, I could somehow work some of this in here. So I was pulling together some ideas and I couldn't really get anything to feel right. So rather than getting stuck in my book on a page that I'm like, do I want to add more stuff to it? Is it done like it is for now? I feel like it's not really done with the flap I put in it, but I don't know where to go with it. So rather than get stuck on this page, I'm going to flip the pages and go somewhere else in this book to work. Um, so, you know, we might we might do something over here instead. I'm kind of feeling like maybe I'd like it with um, maybe go back to some of the stuff that I really like, like a great big piece of abstract something. I don't plan on working on. Well, I could. You know what? Just forget I even said I don't plan on because We'll, we'll just change that plan right now and maybe go over the two pages and see what difference that we can get here um, with this big piece of craft paper. Now it is really thick and I almost feel like we'd be okay painting right on that craft paper, but it's going to soak up stuff even more than our um, watercolor rag paper. So I think as I'm starting, I'm going to put clear gesso here on um, this side so that I'm kind of creating a surface to paint on that's not going to let the paint really just soak into that. Um, so I'm going to just put the clear gesso on and use that as my um, primer for this page. And it dries clear, so I'm not even worried about what that's going to look like because you're just not going to see it. But it'll let my paint kind of sit on top rather than going down in it. And I feel like I just want to go abstract today and we'll see where we end up. All right, so we're going to just let that dry. And it won't take that long. And I think I want to do it as a color palette challenge. So I did pull something out of my uh, Sarah Renee Clark Color Cube Volume 2. Let me set that out of the way. So this is the Color Cube number two. Um, and I've just pulled out a card that I thought, oh, look at these colors. Um, it's like a brush hair on my piece there. And so um, that's what I've got today that I'm going to just, I'm going to experiment with. And I was pulling out some, I've got these little uh, pots of mineral paint, which are basically furniture paint, but I like the colors and I'm not trying to put this up for sale for somebody else. And so I'm going to use this. Um, I've got these kind of colors here in between this brighter orange and this salmon color, and I might pull some of those in with some mark making, but I also thought that maybe I could mix some of the colors that I found to kind of get in that range because I didn't have anything exactly that color. So I've pulled out Blick Mite Acrylic Red, Blue Red Light, and then this is a Fusion Paint Cranberry, Prairie Sunset, um, this is a little bit lighter than this green, but it's conservatory and I liked it. And then this last color is, I think it's peony, but it's got paint on it. Peony. <laughs> and it's a really light pink, so I just thought we could mix some colors together. And then we've got this kind of um, graphite-y color in here, so I could use some liquid pencil, maybe even like... Um, some kind of bold mark with a graphite 
crayon so we're that's just kind of where I'm thinking and the color palette that I was going to be inspired by and I've gotten to where I really like using color palettes like this because I can then set aside the ones that are my super very favorite and keep on using those as say like my signature palettes but I find color frustrating even after working with it for 30 years in the different careers that I've had and I find that this just removes the hardest decision in my art making process gives me a color palette to then go with so i'm going to be inspired by that one i don't try to get the colors exact that's not my goal and i think what i'm going to do is with my non-dominant hand draw with this water soluble graphite lyra um great big piece of lead that's um, but I don't try to get exact. That's not my goal. That could be your goal, but it's not my goal. My goal is to have a place to start and kind of branch out from there. Let's just go ahead and draw over here. I know this is not completely dry, but it'll be there by the time we, we want to get there. And so I do non-dominant so that we don't end up with precise, exact, straight lines. Um, these are looking pretty good today though for my non-dominant hand. I had a friend in school who broke her right arm um, and she was right and left handed so she became very ambidextrous and I was so jealous so I used to practice writing with my left hand to see if I could like write my name and stuff and so I feel like my non-dominant hand is not as scribbly as, as it could be. <laughs> Just thought it would be fun to let a, let go of a little bit of that control. If you feel like you can't let go of the control, then draw and paint with the hand that you're not used to drawing and painting with so that you give up that control on purpose. So I like that. Let's come over here and do some mark making. And this is water soluble, so I could immediately hit some of these lines with some water and let that, you know, balloon out a bit like um, a watercolor. Or I can put paint on top of it and that might activate it. Um, just to give you an idea, we could hit some of this with some water and get some of that to then really branch out and be some yummy smokiness out here. And you don't have to do that, but just know that it's going to activate with anything wet on top of it. Look at that. Oh, so I'm already, already kind of feeling better about this than I was the page I'm stuck on. You know, so if you get a, a cool journal like this and you get stuck somewhere in there and then you just feel like you can't move forward, just turn the page and work on a different layout and come back to it later. I mean, we may be doing a whole bunch of stuff. And at some point I might think, I feel ready to have an idea. I feel ready to, you know, tackle that other page that I just couldn't deal with before. And that's what I consider it, like dealing with it because, you know, it's hard sometimes getting past a roadblock. And to me, that's a roadblock. Okay, I'm just going to open these up. I'm not too concerned about being right on the money with our colors. I just wanted to have a starting point. Um, so I'm almost thinking like we could either put some paint out because what I kind of, yeah, let's just do it. What I want to have is maybe some areas of big swashes of paint. Let's do this with, whoa, let's do this with our silicone bowl scraper. So this is a, I'll put it in the link. This is a miser, mister, or something like that. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but I will put a link. It's a silicone bowl scraper that you use with oil and coal wax. This one's actually a Zoe Chloe, um, but it's, it's patterned after the one that you generally see people use with oil and coal wax. I must have got this one as a, oh look, it's another one similar to the one I like. <laughs> but I love it and so we might say okay working with this color palette and let's work with a non-traditional tool so I like that that means I'm gonna have to get some of this out of here with maybe like a palette knife yeah let's do that I kind of feel like let's just work with weird stuff today oh 
look at that. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm feeling good already. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like totally. I was getting very upset with those other pages. Um, trust me. We all do that. Now it's like almost like, okay, wow. I'm so glad that I didn't get hung up and then not revisit that because I purposely made myself sit down. I was going to do something else and I still might as like a secondary project, but I was going to just abandon this book almost. I mean, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I feel stuck and I don't know where to go. And now I'm frustrated with, you know, working in say like an art journal and now I never visit it again because trust me, I got tons of journals which is why it's my goal this year because my, I really want a beautiful full art journal that I can then flip through and be like look at this really cool thing I made that's what I want I want my own little art journal book it's a sticker that's randomly sitting over here what did that come out of I think that came out of like the holiday box for one of my subscription like the maybe the uh, sketch box this stuff dries really fast, but I, yeah, I want a book that just like other people you see flipping through like on Instagram and stuff. I want a book like that to flip through too. And every time I sit down to make a, you know, a journal or something like this, sometimes I, I leave my desk frustrated because it does not do what I thought it should have done. I can't really loving this over here. Um, so I almost was not going to revisit that and then I, I'm, I'm so I purposely sat down today and thought we're doing this you're getting that back out and we're going to a different page and we're doing this Whoa, look at that Whoa, oh look at that Whoa. okay that's yummy kind of forgetting this whole side over here but that's okay it's like I love this right here <laughs> yum 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 <laughs> Now, I almost do not want to use this, um, ooh, totally broke that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a good thing I have a whole stack of these plastic knives over here. I keep a bunch of these. I could use the metal ones, but the plastic, I've got a whole bunch of these over here, just different sizes and, um, different little things like that. Um, yeah, because apparently I like to randomly break stuff accidentally. So now I'm almost feeling like I like this colorway without adding like the the darker cranberry or the green. Like I'm digging this. And, you know, when you're doing a color palette thing and you're like, oh, I think I'm there with this right here. You can, you can pause the colors in your piece or you can be like, okay, I'm going to mark make with some of these colors instead of continuing to add to the piece with what I was doing. And I'm kind of feeling like I want to add to the piece. Some of these are starting to dry out. So these little furniture paints apparently dry out. I don't even care that they're furniture paint. I love them. <laughs> oh, I feel like, oh, oh, I love this one. So let's get maybe, maybe some, let's let this dry. I'm going to dry this. All right, probably the thickest paint's not so dry, but it's dry enough for me to now kind of just decide, like, do I want to, oh, look at that. That just kind of peeled right up. But do I want to mark make in some of the colors that are in our palette? So, yes, I've got this kind of salmon color. So I haven't abandoned my color palette, but I'm kind of pulling it in with another medium. It doesn't all have to be the same medium. And I like that we can come in with a color that we're like, do we want to add that? But we can kind of come in um, a little bit different than maybe we intended. And I like that. And now I'm just mark making and playing. Oh, sure, 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 sure. I like that. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, I love the Neo Color 2 crayons. You usually see me use those pastels because that's what I was currently obsessed with this past year. But I have all the Neo Colors because I've been obsessed with them for many years. And what I like about these, especially in an um, art journal like this, is 
you're not going to have it bleed onto each other like you do with the oil pastel. So I kind of like that um, we're doing that with this instead. I don't feel like I have to coat that with something to keep it from bleeding into the other page when I shut up the book. Wow, look at that. Look at that. And this, you know, this could end up being a background. Um, it could end up being finished. There's nothing saying that you have to then add stuff on top of that. I almost want to pull in this wild um, kind of red color. So I'm just kind of matching that up over here with some of the colors that I've got in the Neo Color 2 box. Um, so yeah, let's just, doesn't have to be like a huge amount of that color, but we could come in and just kind of work a little bit in it in some marks here. It's weird working on colored pages, which is why I like that there's some craft paper and other things in here, uh, because that's why too I've got a sketchbook. Um, little set of papers maybe not a sketchbook but it's like these little four by four tan watercolor papers um, by sketchbox i love using this tan paper it makes the coolest little abstracts and stuff and so i think it's really fun a lot of times to play on something that you definitely wouldn't pull out and normally work on and i thoroughly enjoyed that tan paper so i'm like okay i love that this has this yummy craft paper in it because then we could experiment more with a colored something not starting off with white i love that Okay, so I did actually work all the colors in mostly there. I've got the I've got the dark with our graphite. I've got the red with and the salmon with our crayons. I've got the uh, yellow. So I didn't work in the green. Oh, you should have been like, wait, 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 you're missing that green. And I'd have been like, wait, 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 you're right. Let's see, is this the right color? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I could work in a little bit of green just to say, look, I did it. If you do a color palette, this is my little philosophy there, if you don't like all the colors, try to add a tiny bit of each color. It doesn't have to be dominant. It doesn't have to overwhelm your piece. It doesn't have to be so obvious. But now we can say, ha ha, I worked them all in. And then, you know, you kind of feel like, okay, I stayed true to my own personal challenge of working with that little palette. I love that. So now I'm just kind of wondering, this big space right here. Do we love it? Do we not love it? Do we leave it? Do we need to do something else with it? Um, I like on the brown paper this area is because they're colored so you're not feeling like they're missing paint um, or you might be feeling like they're missing paint but I don't feel like they're missing paint um, but we could be we could say you know what we could decide, is there anything else? I could put white on top of this and pull some white in, but I'm actually kind of liking it like it is. It could be a finished painting for me. This could be a finished painting too. I almost wonder, should I put pink up here? Ah, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, let's just do it. Be brave. <gasps> I didn't mean to do all that. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of paint. Whoa. Let's just do it. Just commit. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh. And I'm trying to, you know, use this tool in ways that I don't normally use it, like different directions and stuff. Okay, I'm feeling really good about that now. What do you think? Are you feeling good? I'm feeling pretty good. That's, I feel like we filled in the white area that was really kind of, looking at it thinking what what is going on there like why i feel like i need some of this color in here now um oh look at that look at that okay now i'm feeling good about it if, you, if it doesn't feel finished yet you don't have enough layers which is why on those other pages i'm feeling stuck because in my mind i can't visualize yet what those layers look like but when you get to an abstract i'm like oh ho, ho. 
<laughs> Look at that. Okay, I'm feeling good about that now. Feeling good about that. Okay, now I'm kind of wondering, should we come? Don't you love it how I'm like thinking out loud and then I just put that thing down? Like, should we put something over here in this corner here? And in the end, it was like, yes, yes, we should. Just set that down while you're talking. If you have a hard time letting loose some of your stuff, try talking your way through a painting. You cannot put all of your energy into the stress of the painting while you're running your mouth. So if I'm talking to a camera, so I'm basically talking to you, but at the same time, not really talking to anybody. And so for me... I feel like I have an audience and so you might just pretend that you're filming a video for YouTube and talk me through what you're doing and see if that doesn't mentally open up your brain to just set the thing down without thinking too hard or over stressing about where you're going with your piece. Um, I find that helpful or call a friend, you know, phone a friend and be chatting with them on the phone. Um, that's very helpful kind of feel like we need some more of this out there um yeah so phone a friend pretend it's a game show and you've got to chat through your piece while you're working and see you know where that can get you where can you go with that oh oh like that i feel like i need that i covered up too much there maybe not um, yeah, so try to talk your way through a piece. That's a great way to see if that will loosen you up. I need some yellow up here. And I'm feeling better about this piece. If, you, if it don't feel done, you haven't, you haven't added enough layers. And we could do stencil work on top of this. We could do all kinds of stuff. But I am kind of feeling pretty good about it being just a great big abstract double page similar colors different backgrounds to give you a look of you know what is it doing we could have okay consider this what we could have done is done like a dominant one color over here say like that pink and then over here do something else as the dominant like opposite that so we could have you know like reversed the colors that we were working with on here that might have been fun lots of options lots of good options now i feel like i need some mark making so this is still wet so i'm kind of drawing in the wet paint too but that's okay i like it oh We're going to call this pink urban grunge today because that's kind of where we went. We went into like a pinky, urban-y, grungy. I like it. Ooh, let's go back on top with that, with this. Let's get some of this back out there. So we've still got wet paint. I can definitely see that. So when it's dry, we'll get real good marks right on top. Oh, this almost feels very graffiti, graffiti-ish. I like it. Oh, 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 I like that. That's a nice, fun little in the, uh, in the fold kind of pattern. I liked that. Some days I feel grungy. Today is a grungy day, but it's with the pinks. And I'll tell you, that's not at all where I expected us to go today. I kind of expected it to, I don't know, look a abstract but I, this is not what I envisioned and so start with no expectations pick out a color palette pull out a few yummy supplies and just see like where do you end up it's not it's not the goal to end up anywhere specific and then just delight in the area that you ended like you know didn't even expect to be here but look at this super fun oh I like that we'll call these little ladders <laughs> <laughs> yummy you might be thinking I got a hot mess but I'm thinking this is a yummy abstract today very graffiti feel kind of urban 
I love that. Oh my gosh. You could come on top of that and do some other stuff, you know, if you're doing a page kind of like that. But I'm really feeling like this is it. This is where I wanted to be. I wanted some yummy abstract. I could cut this out and frame it if I wanted to. I love that we have two different pages that we experimented on the craft page and the watercolor paper and that is exactly how i'm going to work with these craft pages i'm going to coat them in that clear gesso first so that i have a good surface that's not just going to soak into that craft paper and just really wrinkle it all up i mean i know it's got some a little tiny bit of warping right now but if i shut this book up when it's dry um, that page should flatten itself back out whereas if i let that soak all the way in um, i might get some wrinkling and stuff that i don't get rid of um, so just my personal preference on how i'm going to deal with the craft pages but I'm actually really thrilled about this page. It makes me feel much better about the page that I abandoned and kind of gives me some ideas on here. Um, if I did something like this on top of, say, a piece like this, then some of this would just kind of shine through the piece. Um, so that might be an idea. I might revisit this kind of abstract work on top of there and let that just kind of shine through. So I'm just keeping this page, I'm just keeping the ideas um, flowing. And then when I hit upon one that gets really exciting and I'm like, oh yeah, I can see that, then I'll revisit this page. And in the end, this could be finished. I don't know. I don't feel like it is, but I feel frustrated with it. This, I'm pretty excited about. So maybe I should have just, you know, done abstracts in this rather than um, the direction that I started. And I could have had a whole abstract book. So I'm kind of feeling like this is turning into an abstract book because this made me so happy today. <laughs> Hope you had fun painting in our sketchbook, our mixed media art journal. I'm going to let these dry and then we can paint on some other pages on another day. But I feel like these are probably going to live like this because I love it. Hope you enjoyed painting with me today. If you love watching my videos, please hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time.